It's 1978, and while truckers were fueling up their rigs powered by Detroit Diesel's legendary engines, something was happening just south in Peoria, Illinois. Caterpillar engineers were putting the finishing touches on an engine that would shatter Detroit's stranglehold on long-haul trucking forever. The Caterpillar 3406 didn't just compete with Detroit Diesel. It rewrote the rules of what a highway engine could be. And the aftershocks of that disruption are still being felt today, more than four decades later. In the early 1970s, Detroit Diesel was the dominant market leader powering approximately 41% of all Class 8 trucks on American highways with their two-stroke engines. Their 8V71 and 8V92 had become as synonymous with trucking as chrome stacks and CB radios. These engines earned their reputation through mechanical simplicity. The two-stroke design eliminated traditional intake valves, using ports in the cylinder walls instead, along with a roots blower to force air through the combustion chamber. This design meant fewer moving parts compared to a full four-stroke valve train. This relative simplicity translated to easier maintenance and lower initial costs, making Detroit engines the go-to choice for fleet operators watching their bottom line. The 8V71, producing between 270 and 318 horsepower depending on configuration, became the workhorse of the interstate system. Its compact V8 configuration fit perfectly into the cab-over engine designs that dominated the era. The engine measured about 65 inches long and 46 inches wide, a compact profile for its power output, making it ideal for space-constrained cab-over trucks under federal trailer-length regulations. <laughs> Drivers knew the distinctive sound of a Detroit two-stroke, that high-pitched whine that earned them the nickname Screamin' Jimmies, after the GMC trucks that commonly housed them. The sound came from the roots-type blower that forced air through the engine, creating a characteristic whistle that could be heard from miles away. But beneath that familiar sound lurked problems that would eventually crack Detroit's foundation. The two-stroke design, while simple, was inherently thirsty. These engines consumed fuel at rates approaching 4.5 miles per gallon under highway conditions, numbers that made fleet managers wince, especially as fuel prices began climbing in the mid-1970s. Although Detroit diesels ran at moderate engine speeds, often around 2100 RPM, the constant operation at these speeds created a harsh environment that wore components quickly. The roots blower required regular maintenance and precise drive alignment, with blower seals and couplings being frequent points of failure. When these components failed, the engine could suddenly lose power, sometimes leaving drivers stranded on remote highways. Replacement blower assemblies could cost over $800 in 1970s dollars, and installing them required training specific to Detroit diesel two-stroke engines. More troubling were the oil leaks that seemed endemic to Detroit engines. The combination of high crankcase pressures from the supercharger and numerous gasket surfaces created a maintenance nightmare. The oil pan gasket itself uses dozens of fasteners, each requiring precise torque, which added to the maintenance complexity for Detroit-powered rigs. Truck stops across America were stained with the telltale black puddles left by Detroit-powered rigs. Drivers joked that if a Detroit engine wasn't leaking oil, it was probably out of oil. The noise was another issue that went beyond mere annoyance. The high-frequency whine of a Detroit two-stroke measured over 95 decibels at highway speeds, creating noise pollution problems in urban areas and contributing to driver fatigue on long hauls. Some municipalities began restricting Detroit-powered trucks from residential areas during certain hours forcing truckers to plan routes around noise ordinances. Despite these drawbacks, Detroit's market dominance seemed unshakable. They had the dealer network, the parts availability, and most importantly, the trust of fleet operators who had built their businesses around Detroit reliability. The company's Redford Township facility was churning out engines as fast as they could build them, producing over 50,000 units annually by 1975. But 600 miles away in Peoria, Caterpillar was taking a completely different approach to highway power. 
Caterpillar had built its reputation moving dirt, not freight. Their yellow machines dominated construction sites worldwide, powered by robust four-stroke diesels designed to run continuously under brutal conditions. The 3306 and 3308 engines, powering cats, dozers, and excavators, routinely operated 12 hours a day in dusty, demanding environments while delivering exceptional reliability. But in the mid-70s, CATS engineers began asking a provocative question. What if we applied our construction engine philosophy to over-the-road trucking? The timing was perfect. Emissions regulations were tightening, if fuel prices were rising, and fleet operators were beginning to question whether Detroit's two-stroke dominance was sustainable. The result was the 3406, and it represented a fundamental departure from Detroit's two-stroke philosophy. Where Detroit prioritized compactness, CAT emphasized durability. Where Detroit accepted oil leaks as inevitable, CAT engineered them out of existence. The 3406 inline six configuration measured about 65 inches in length, slightly longer than Detroit's V8s, but that added length allowed for a longer stroke and greater low end torque. Its 6.5 inch stroke compared to Detroit's five inch stroke enabled the engine to produce massive torque at low RPMs. Peak torque of 1,250 pound foot arrived at just 1,200 RPM compared to Detroit engines that needed to spin to 1,800 to reach their power band. This truly transformed the driving experience. Truckers accustomed to keeping Detroit engines spinning at 2,000 plus RPM suddenly found themselves cruising at 1,400 while maintaining highway speeds. The fuel economy improvements were immediate and dramatic. Many operators reported 15 to 20% better mileage, with some achieving over 6 miles per gallon compared to Detroit's 4.5. But the real revolution was in the engine's construction. The original 3406 used a dry block design, but Caterpillar later introduced replaceable wet cylinder liners in models like the 3406B, C, and E, a design philosophy long proven in their construction equipment. These liners with a 5.4-inch bore could be extracted from the top of the block using specialized tooling, allowing for rapid overhauls and significantly extending engine life. Thanks to that liner design, a 3406 could theoretically run forever with proper maintenance, something many of Detroit's fixed-bore engines simply couldn't match. In the earlier 71 series, cylinder wear meant costly block replacement. And while the 92 series introduced wet liners, the shift still left fleets looking for fewer rebuilds and lower total ownership cost. The bottom end was equally impressive. The 3406's forged steel crankshaft rode on seven main bearings instead of the five used by most competitors, distributing loads more evenly and reducing stress concentrations. Each main bearing measured 4.25 inches in diameter, compared to Detroit's 3.5-inch bearings. The block itself was a massive iron casting weighing over 1,200 pounds, designed to handle the stresses of continuous heavy-duty operation without flexing or cracking. Cat had essentially built a construction engine that happened to fit in a truck. The cylinder head used individual steel valve seats that could be replaced when worn, rather than Detroit's integral seats that required complete head replacement. The injection system used Caterpillar's proven sleeve metering unit injectors, delivering precise fuel quantities at pressures up to 26,000 PSI. Early adopters of the 3406 were primarily in vocational applications, logging trucks, heavy haul operators, and construction fleets that appreciated the engine's ability to lug heavy loads at low speeds. Pacific Logging Company in Oregon was among the first to spec 3406 engines in their Kenworth log trucks reporting that the engines could pull loaded trailers up steep grades without downshifting, something impossible with Detroit engines. Drivers loved the power band that delivered maximum torque right where they needed it most, in the lower RPM ranges where trucks spent most of their time. Mechanics appreciated the modular design that allowed major components to be serviced without complete engine removal. The 3406's reputation for reliability began spreading through truck stops and maintenance shops across the country. Word began spreading through the trucking community about this quiet, fuel-efficient engine that didn't leak oil and could run 500,000 miles between overhauls. 
The first major breakthrough came in 1979 when Consolidated Freightways, one of America's largest trucking companies, began specifying 3406 engines in their new Freightliner tractors. CF's decision wasn't based on initial cost. The 3406 commanded a $3,500 premium over Detroit engines in 1979. Instead, they were betting on total cost of ownership, factoring in fuel savings, reduced maintenance, and longer engine life. CF's engineering team had calculated that the fuel savings alone would recover the premium within 18 months of operation. The gamble paid off spectacularly. CF's 3406 powered trucks consistently outperformed their Detroit powered counterparts in fuel economy tests, achieving 6.2 miles per gallon compared to 4.8 miles per gallon for comparable Detroit powered units. More importantly, they stayed on the road longer between maintenance intervals. While Detroit engines typically needed major service every 300,000 miles, the 3406s were routinely running 500,000 miles before requiring significant work. Other major fleets took notice. By 1982, companies like Schneider National, J.B. Hunt, and Werner Enterprises were all specifying significant numbers of 3406 engines. Schneider's maintenance records showed 3406 powered trucks had 23% fewer roadside breakdowns than their Detroit powered counterparts, translating to millions in reduced downtime costs. Throughout the 80s, the momentum continued building. Fleet operators discovered that the 3406's superior fuel economy became even more critical after the 1979 oil crisis, sent diesel prices soaring from 55 cents per gallon to over $1.20. Companies that had previously accepted Detroit's thirsty engines as a cost of doing business suddenly had spreadsheets showing the 3406 could pay for its higher initial cost within the first year of operation. Detroit's serviceability limitations became a growing liability. Their engines often required specialized tools, including proprietary timing fixtures and valve bridge removal equipment, while the 3406's modular design allowed most repairs with standard shop gear. As the 1980s progressed, Caterpillar continued refining the 3406 design. The 3406B, introduced in 1986, increased power output to 350 horsepower while maintaining the engine's legendary durability. Electronic controls began appearing, allowing for more precise fuel delivery and improved diagnostics. The B series featured an improved cylinder head design with better cooling passages and upgraded valve train components. But perhaps most damaging to Detroit was the reliability gap that emerged as both engines accumulated high mileage. Detroit's two-stroke design, while simple in concept, created unique stresses that led to predictable failure points. Alongside these inherent stresses, the blower drive coupling became notorious for shearing under load, especially during aggressive throttle inputs on steep grades. The 3406, by contrast, aged gracefully. Its four-stroke design distributed stresses more evenly, and the robust construction handled wear better than Detroit's lighter components. The 3406C, launched in 1993, represented the pinnacle of mechanical diesel technology. With power ratings up to 425 horsepower and 1,550 pound-foot of torque, it could outpull anything Detroit offered while still delivering superior fuel economy. The C-Series engines featured improved cylinder heads with four valves per cylinder, upgraded injection systems producing 28,000 PSI injection pressures, and enhanced cooling systems with larger radiators and improved water pumps. Emissions pressure began mounting during this period, and here again the 3406's four-stroke design proved advantageous. While Detroit struggled to adapt their two-stroke technology to meet tightening knocks and particulate standards, CAT's four-stroke architecture provided a better foundation for emissions control systems. The 3406's combustion chambers could be optimized for cleaner burning, and the engine's lower operating temperatures reduced NOx formation. Detroit Diesel wasn't standing still during this period, but their response revealed how thoroughly CAT had disrupted their thinking. The Series 60, introduced in 1987, abandoned Detroit's traditional two-stroke design for a four-stroke inline-six configuration, focusing on electronic controls, low RPM torque, and improved durability, 
reflecting the shift in market expectations driven by Caterpillar's innovation. The Series 60 was a good engine, arguably Detroit's best, but it arrived too late to reclaim the market leadership Detroit had lost. By the time the Series 60 reached full production in 1989, the 3406 had already established itself as the gold standard for long-haul trucking. Fleet operators who had switched to CAT weren't interested in switching back, especially when the 3406C continued to outperform the Series 60 in real-world applications. The emissions regulations of the 90s and 2000s eventually forced both manufacturers to abandon their mechanical designs in favor of electronic engines with complex after-treatment systems. The 3406E, introduced in 1994, marked CAT's transition to full electronic control, using electronic unit injectors while retaining much of the engine's mechanical serviceability. But even as newer, cleaner engines entered the market, the 3406's reputation continued to grow. Today, more than two decades after the last 3406E rolled off Caterpillar's production line, these engines command premium prices in the used market. Owner operators and small fleets prize them for their simplicity, reliability, and the fact that they can be repaired without computer diagnostics. Earlier 3406 models featured mechanical injection systems that could be adjusted with basic tools, while the 3406E introduced fully electronic unit injection, requiring some diagnostic equipment but retaining the engine's reputation for robust construction and performance tuning by skilled mechanics. The aftermarket for 3406 parts remains robust with companies like Caterpillar Riemann, S and S Diesel, and countless independent rebuilders keeping these engines running. Complete rebuild kits are readily available for under $4,000, and many shops specialize exclusively in 3406 work. It's not uncommon to see 3406-powered trucks with over 2 million miles still earning their keep on America's highways. Many truckers still argue that the 3406C and 3406E were the last great mechanical diesels. Engines that combined power, reliability, and serviceability in ways that modern electronic engines simply cannot match. The peak programmable electronic engine control was featured on late 3406C units, providing electronic management before the transition to full electronic injection in the 3406E. Detroit Diesel, meanwhile, has struggled to recapture the magic of their early dominance. Now operating as Detroit under Daimler ownership, They've produced capable engines like the DD-13 and DD-15, but none have achieved the iconic status of the 3406. The company that once owned two-thirds of the heavy-duty market now fights for market share against not just Caterpillar, but also Cummins and Packard's MX engines. The 3406's influence extends beyond just market share numbers. It fundamentally changed what customers expected from a heavy-duty diesel engine. Before the 3406, truckers accepted oil leaks, high fuel consumption, and frequent rebuilds as inevitable. CAT proved that engines could be clean, efficient, and durable, raising the bar for everyone. Modern engines from all manufacturers now feature the low RPM torque curves, modular construction, and extended service intervals that the 3406 pioneered. The wet liner design has become standard across the industry, and even Detroit's current engines operate at the low RPM ranges that CAT popularized. The 3406 didn't just win market share. It reshaped expectations across the entire trucking industry. It proved that a diesel engine could be durable, powerful, and driver-friendly, forcing competitors like Detroit to adapt or fall behind. 